So after Trump won uh, the Iowa caucus, uh, Rachel Maddow at MSNBC said this. Let me say, let me just interject. I'm sorry, I just have to do a little bit of business just for a second. Um, at this point in the evening, the projected winner of the Iowa caucuses um, has just started giving his victory speech. Uh, we will keep an eye on that as it happens. Uh, we will let you know if there's any news made in that speech, if there's anything noteworthy, something substantive and important. Um, the reason I'm saying this is, of course, there is a reason that we and other news organizations have generally stopped giving an unfiltered live platform to remarks by former President Trump. It is not out of spite. It is not a decision that we relish. It is a decision that we regularly revisit. Um, and honestly, earnestly, it is not an easy decision. But there is a cost to us as a news organization of knowingly broadcasting untrue things. Boy. It's so refreshing to be gaslit by a lesbian, isn't it? <laughs> she gives a bad name to people with a high blink rate, doesn't she? <laughs> I think, the, I mean, the, her, her eyelashes are less fake than she is, okay? <laughs> You know, I think it's great that the MSNBC aren't, they won't show Trump's speech, but they'll show Rachel Madcow's holier than thou speech. Yeah. If she gets any better at projecting, IMAX is gonna make an offer. <laughs> As a lesbian, I've always fantasized about being, I've always fantasized about being infantilized by Rachel Madcow, but it just looked nothing like this. It was a different outfit and everything. <laughs> She does class lighting. <laughs> That's good. Class lighting. She's like, uh, she's like Suri for detached, rich, white shit lips, right? <laughs> hey, Suri, say something shitty about Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump is a white racist who is going to lead to us a civil war. <laughs> Thanks, Suri. <laughs> so there's a, there's a cost, she says, to them uh, airing untrue things. Well, here's an untrue thing she never apologized for. It means for instead of the virus being able to hop from person to person to person to person, spreading and spreading, sickening some of them, but not all of them, and the ones that it doesn't sicken don't know they have it, and then they give it to even more people because they didn't recognize they were, right? Instead of the virus being able to hop from person to person to person, potentially mutating and becoming more virulent and drug resistant along the way, now we know that the vaccines work well enough that the virus stops with every vaccinated person. A vaccinated person gets exposed to the virus. The virus does not infect them. The virus cannot then use that person to go anywhere else. It cannot use a vaccinated person as a host to go get more people. That means the vaccines will get us to the end of this. So everything she said was complete fucking bullshit lie. And I, she's pretending that this is an actual vaccine the way vaccines used to work. Yeah, that's the way they used to work, but I guess she didn't get the memo that they actually had to rewrite the definition of what a vaccine is because it doesn't do any of the things she just claimed it did on MSNBC. And by the way, there was no cost for her to say that. There's no cost for her to say untrue things like that at the top of her lungs into a camera. There's no cost. She never had to pay a price and she's never Never ever apologize for it. In fact, they won't even admit that that's the case. That so and again, it's fun to be gaslit by a lesbian because gay people are moral and they would never lie to us. <laughs> by the way, did Russia not? There she is. Did Russia not just help Donald Trump elect Donald Trump? Did they pick the cabinet? So there is no cost. I mean, the, the idea that she's pretending that somehow they're virtuous, but there's people who watch her show, they think that. There's people who watch their show and think that, well, Rachel Maddow's telling us, my, my former roommate at his Christmas party said, Rachel Maddow's, uh, and she is, uh, what was the word he used, Steph? Uh, she, she is uh, impeccable, that's what he said. <laughs> she's beyond reproach, that's what he said. And I was like, oh my God, I go, is there anything that you hear on MSNBC that you don't believe? Is there anything? And uh, he didn't, there's nothing, there wasn't anything. 
he was like, he was like, I'm gonna stop talking now. It turns out the same people that like Rachel Maddow, they love Gavin Newsom. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Gavin Newsom. Yeah. They go to the same hairstylist. So, uh, Matt Orfala, who uh, I'll take credit for discovering, I discovered him before anybody else, and he used to make videos for my show, so everybody, anyway. And then they then fucking Matt Taibbi stole him from me. Um, now he's too busy to do shit for me anymore. I'm like, hey, can you do me? Oh, Jimmy, I'm really bucked, bucked up doing stuff for Matt Taibbi. Okay. So Matt Orfala put this together. Uh, and if, if you think there's a cost for MSNBC and Rachel Maddow for saying untrue things on their show, let me disabuse you of that idea right now. McCarthy publicly charges that the United States is invested with foreign forces at work in our politics. He says that he has a list of 600 Twitter accounts that appear to be linked to the Russian government. That's a lie. These Kremlin linked accounts. These Kremlin linked accounts. These Kremlin linked accounts. Russian linked accounts. Kremlin linked accounts. A foreign influence. Kremlin oriented Twitter accounts. Kremlin linked Twitter accounts. Russian linked Twitter accounts. Impersonating Americans. They are every day playing on social media. There's a website called Hamilton 68 that measures it. This Russian influence tracker on Twitter. The Russian Dashboard. It's a real-time dashboard of Russian influence. You know, the Russian networks that we monitor. Accounts allegedly linked to bots and trolls that are linked to Russia. Russia linked accounts and bots according to a Russian tracker. To track what Russian bots are doing. Kremlin linked accounts. Kremlin efforts. Kremlin attacks. The dashboard, Hamilton 68, determined that Russia was in the Alabama election. We know that the Russians were focused on us. These forensic sites show what the Russians are doing to us. Interference from Russia. These Russian intrusions. Russian influence Twitter the Russia were interfering. The impact of McCarthyism is felt across the United States. The Russian bot posed a great threat to democracy. Now this data comes from Hamilton 68. That's a web dashboard and it tracks around 600 Russia link accounts and it doesn't provide the names of those accounts. I will not give those names. Because if it did, uh, the Russians could simply change them. Yeah. <laughs> what does he say? Kidding me? <laughs> So this goes on for 11 minutes, this video, of this lie after lie after untrue thing after untrue thing, and they were basing this all on Hamilton 68 or whatever, it was all made up, all pretend, oh we can't tell you the names of the Twitter accounts and social media accounts that are backed by Russia, because then they would just change, that's exactly what McCarthy said, I can't, I have the names, but I can't, I have a secret list. And they did the same goddamn thing. And that's what Matt Orfala so brilliantly is pointing out here in this video. I'll play a little bit more if I have some. Russian bots obviously connected with Russian intel agencies getting involved in a school shooting. What the hell is he talking about? The horrendous shooting at the high school in Florida. Russia played a role. Bots that spread false information on Twitter. It comes to the shooting in Parkland, Florida. Russian social media bots seized on the Florida shooting. Russian trolls tweeting about Parkland. Russian bot arm. So they just keep going. So it's, it, they've been lying to you at the top of their lungs since at least 2016 and way before that too. And it was Russiagate, which was a deep state hoax that was pulled off in conjunction with the corporate owned media and the Democratic Party and the Hillary campaign, which funded the goddamn dossier for fuck's sake. They lied about funding it for an entire year. Who did they lie to about that? To the FBI, which I don't know why they had to because the FBI was in on the whole fucking Russiagate thing in the first place. But nobody's ever been made, to, there's no price for any of these lies. There's no comeuppance, there's no mea culpa, there's nobody there to hold them accountable except places like the Jimmy Dore Show and the Gray Zone, and that's about it. Those are the only places holding these people to account, and what do they do? They call us conspiracy theorists, even though the biggest conspiracy of my life was the dumbest conspiracy was that Donald Trump was working with Russia to win the election and hurt our country. It was the dumbest fucking, it was easily disprovable. I disproved that Russia hacked the DNC server in 2016, I brought on Bill Binney, who was the top code breaker from the NSA for decades, and then the FBI tried to imprison him, but Bill Binney's smarter than the FBI, and he outsmarted them, so they couldn't put him in prison. And I brought him on the show, and he showed forensically how Russia could not have uh, uh, hacked the DNC server. No one else re-reported re that. Isn't that amazing? They didn't re-report any of that? Nobody re-reported any of that. So, go ahead, you wanna say something? Well, I was just gonna say, you mentioned Gray Zone, and I was thinking maybe you should say do dissonance. Oh. 
Fuck them. They were not. They didn't even have a show when I was. I was debunking Russiagate when they were still shitting in diapers, okay? And we were still giving hand jobs behind the Port Authority. <laughs> this guy was on it. When did your show start? We, okay, we, we took a very meandering path. We started out blogging. Oh. And we would just, when we dropped an article, we'd be like, hey man, what are you doing this week? You wanna like record a podcast or something? We just did audio, then we started doing Facebook video. What year was that? That was 2019. Yeah, yeah, I was uh... <laughs> They don't need to punk to Russiagate for almost half a decade. <laughs> By the time you started your No, I saw game. it. You know what I find all adorable. It's an adorable story, though, Russ. It is adorable. <laughs> you guys are doing great work over there. Strikes me as interesting is how, equally interesting is how Americans went, and stopped caring about it. And just left the car in the middle of the freeway. Just yeah, uh, the right. What about Russia? I thought Russia's running our elections. All these politicians, they still in office? They didn't go after them? Well, somehow Russia... Uh, over, they, they rigged the 2016 election, but they just decided not to do it in 2020. And isn't that weird? <laughs> I mean, by their own logic, R R Russia could have done it, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, anything else you like? I'm sorry, I interrupted your heartwarming story <laughs> about the, uh, the origin story of Doom. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to ruin it. It's going to be a Christmas movie uh, <laughs> later in the year. The feel-good movie of uh, 2024. Uh, no, but but uh, in regards to this, we just covered it uh, on your show. The FBI wants to withhold Seth Rich's laptop for 66 years. Why? Why? If there's nothing to see there, why would you? So again, I was out in front on that story too, and I got smeared for it in the Washington Post. Dave Weigel, that piece of shit who was handpicked by Jeff Bezos to cover uh, progressive politics. If you don't know who Dave Weigel is, he used to do pro-Iraq war rallies when he was in college at Northwestern University, and he was the head of their school newspaper. So he was of fighting age, and instead of going and fighting in Iraq, he decided to do pro-war Iraq rallies on his college campus. And of course that's the guy that the billionaire Jeff Bezos handpicks to go cover progressive politics, okay? He's not gonna pick me or somebody like us to actually pro cover progressive politics. He's gonna pick a pro-war piece of shit like that, and then when I I asked obvious questions about Seth Rich's murder. By the way, when was the last time I asked this question at the panel at the TYT? Everybody at the Young Turks, too afraid to ask a question about Seth Rich because they'll never go outside the mainstream narrative. I was on a panel with Jake Uger, Ben Mankiewicz, and I said, hey, when was the last time reporters weren't asked or allowed to ask questions about an unsolved murder? And they go, well, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> And that was it. And that was it. They never fucking brought it up again. And when I got smeared for it in the Washington Post by Dave Weigel, he put me in an article where they were trying to get people afraid of YouTube. And they were saying it's filled with white supremacists and Nazis and pedophiles and Jimmy Dore and Seth Rich conspiracies. And did the Young Turks do a video debunking that shit? No. Did they have my back on that? No. But now, here we are, six, seven, eight years later, and the FBI finally admits that, yet they lied and said they didn't have his computer, then they said they did have his computer, but they couldn't get the data, then they said, of course we have the data, but now we're not gonna release it for 65 years, and nobody will do the follow-up saying, hey, turns out Jimmy Dore was fucking right about that, Seth Rich, and we were all a bunch of goddamn cowards, and we wouldn't do basic fucking journalism. Well, th I mean, this is something. Speaking of Matt Taibbi, guys like you. No, I'm teasing not, about Matt Taibbi. I like Matt Taibbi. No, I know. Uh, guys like you, those were the reporters. Taibbi writes about that in Hate Inc. That the kinds of people who used to be reporters were working class gadflies. They were muckrakers. They were people who wanted to stir up trouble. You're exactly the personality profile of what reporters used to be. And that's why you keep hitting on these stories that the, the kind of reporters, so-called reporters you have today, don't hit on because they shifted to pulling the reporting pool out of the same elite universities and circles that the politicians they're supposed to be covering come from. 
Yeah, Pat, Dave Wagle they all went, hang out together. Yeah, Dave Wagle went to Northwestern, which is an elite university, and uh, that's not, that's the guy who gets tapped. Of course, it's they're never going to tap a guy who didn't go to college who acts to be a reporter, or a guy who got C's in college like me and and has a, a show. That they're going to go right for those people because they're of the same class and they're always class loyal, and that's what that's about. And uh, so, yeah, it's weird that a dumb jag up. Well, I'm not a pothead anymore, but I used to be. <laughs> Pothead comedian could get uh, could get the, the Russia Gate right and debunk it from day one. Could get the Syrian gas attacks, which was a false flag bullshit. That whole war was bullshit, and get that right. Libya, Syria, Ukraine, Russia Gate. What up? COVID, the vax, lockdowns, masks, every fucking thing. It's not hard if I can do it. So they're not doing it because they're on purpose. They're not doing it because they're afraid, scared little cowards who don't want to act, actually risk their careers, their jobs, their reputation, or like Jon Stewart, doesn't want to risk being invited to parties. He can't fucking have that happen anymore. Once he told the truth about where the Wuhan virus actually came from, he was banned from polite society. And he's, uh, he's coming back. By the way, he's coming back on The Daily Show. I can't wait to see all the shit he doesn't talk about. <laughs> I think he's coming back just to let us know how bad Trump is. That's all this is. He wants to get in on some of that Trump cash and Trump bashing, and he can't leave it all up to uh, Noah and Jimmy Kimmel, so he's got to get in there and do some of it. Anyway, anything else you'd like to add? Go ahead. Oh, I was going to just say, uh, I like to leave the Seth Rich murder stuff to the professionals like Dateline in 2020 and Forensic Files. And, like, yeah. Yeah. Family murder. Family murder. Uh, it, Joe, I will, I will have a tip of the hat to Joe Rogan on the Seth Rich thing because he was not afraid to say that Joe, Seth Rich was murdered because he leaked that information to Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. He said it also from day one. And uh, so again, it comes down to comedians uh, with balls that say something because we don't give a fuck. And Russell Brand also, three comedians. Isn't that amazing? Okay, all right. And hey boy, whatever, whatever came of all that hubbub about Russell Brand and his horrible sexual death, nothing, nothing. Nothing. They just did it to discredit him and smear him and drag his name through the mud and get him demonetized from YouTube, which they did. He had over six million subscribers on YouTube, which that you're going to make a lot of money with six million subscribers, and he could actually maybe start funding real investigations and things like that. And they can't have that, right? Which is the same reason why they fired Tucker Carlson. You don't get fired for lying. You get fired for telling the truth. Lies get... Look what happened at MSNBC. She got a $35 million contract after she lied about Russiagate at the top of her lungs for five straight years. $35 million. You know how much money that is a day? $100,000 a day is what Rachel Maddow, woman of the people, gets paid. Okay. A woman ahead. of 15 people. Yeah. <laughs> I would say more than that. Hey, come see us do a live stand-up show. We're going to be in Omaha, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Michigan, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, Philadelphia, Avenal, New Jersey, Boston, Palm Springs, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. See you at a live show. Mm -hmm.